in this live self-defense video, I want you to learn how to defend yourself using a short stick. And we're gonna talk about short sticks for self-defense. We start with the Japanese palm stick. This is just what it sounds like. It goes in your palm, you close your hand around it, it acts like a roll of quarters for you old school guys, old school girls. So you can strike with a lot more power, a lot more force, a lot more weight in your hand. It's very effective. You can also use it to strike swinging in this motion. Think about hitting the temple up here, or into the jaw, into the ear, into the neck, into the arm or one of the joints. Swinging this way, you also have this reverse striking motion coming down over the top. Think of digging right into the soft tissue there or into the top of the chest or for a more permanent self-defense strike into the neck. All using this stick here, this palm stick, the Japanese Jawara. You also have these basic thrusting motions. So this is a very effective size short stick. And you can see this one is a little bit thicker. It's fatter than some that you may have used before, but that is easier when you have an older hand or a hand with a little bit more arthritis to give you a stronger, better grip. Hello, Doug, it's good to see you. So this is where it all starts. It all starts when you learn how to defend yourself using short sticks for self-defense. It starts with the Japanese Yawara palm stick. A lot of the techniques that I train and that I teach come from this one. So this is the first one I wanted you to see that, but I brought a bunch of different options to show you what else you might be able to use. Now this is a version, it's a little bit more modern, right? This is a hard piece of metal. I think it's tungsten. I forget the gentleman that sent them to me. He manufactures these. It has a grip here so that it holds. You can see it's about the same length. This is old school. This feels, this is oak. It feels really good the way it's made. And yeah, and Chicago asks if this is effective. This is effective. Now, if the question is, will this defeat someone who's got one of these? No. Is this better than nothing? If you have this, will this increase the power of your strike? Absolutely yes. Having something like this will make you strike a lot stronger. Hello, Patrick, it's good to see you. So if you have nothing else but something like this and you need to defend yourself against a stronger person, a taller person, you can put this in your hand, swinging it this way, striking that target. All of the force of turning your shoulders and hips, your body moving forward is now concentrated into this hard point right there, that hard tip. So that's why this becomes very, very effective. Hello, Steven. It's very effective too in striking or punching. And the bigger it is, and the heavier it is, the more power your punch will have. Just putting, it's like, like I said before, it's like putting a roll of quarters. It's dirty boxing, it's dirty fighting, but it's for self-defense. Not for street fighting, not for bar fights, not for picking fights with people, not for settling school beefs. This is all for self-defense. So this is old school, this is new school. I prefer this one just because I like the way that it feels. I don't think it will move very much. Hello, Kai. Kai says that he prefers to be called Kai, so we'll call you Kai. Now this one I'm gonna to put to the side and show you kind of the sister. These are both made by Cane Masters. Cane Masters makes my self-defense canes. They make this one specifically for me. Down here in Florida, we have a lot of canals, we have the ocean, we have a lot of water, and you have this tip here, and that is a window breaker. If you go into the water and the pressure from the water is pushing on your car, you can't get out. You can't roll the windows down, the battery's dead. If it's electric, if you have a crank, the old school, it won't come down because of the pressure, but having a small point like that allows you to smash very quickly and it shatters the window, you swim out. So that's why that's on there. That's also good for self-defense for obvious reasons. We won't go into that. This goes around your hand so you don't lose it. Hello, Hank, it's good to see you. Um, you can strike with either end. Again, you have thrusting motions, you have striking over the top, coming into the angle, kind of a reverse striking motion. You have this swinging motion, all with this. You also have that straight punch using this version of the Iwara, the Japanese palm stick. And this one, this is a little bit nicer. There's a link below if you wanna see what the dimensions are. A lot of you are probably crafty enough, you could make your own. I always say invest your time, invest your energy before you invest your money. Or if you're like me, you don't have as much time, you wanna buy one, there's a link before, below to this one. Now, like I said, everything is based on these palm sticks. But I'm gonna put these palm sticks to the side because I wanna show you some other short sticks. When you have to defend yourself and you wanna use short sticks for self-defense, 
I want to show you one of my favorite versions that's in every office, virtually every office. It's in a lot of classrooms for school teachers, and that is the dry erase marker or the big fat um, the marks a lot markers, right? The big, the black ones that you can write on clothes with. And those are just a little bit longer than these, but this is basically the same thing. It's not as heavy, but again, if you have nothing else and you have multiple attackers, a bigger opponent, someone who's really trying to hurt you, you're trying to defend your life or the life of the people that you love, it's your right to defend yourself. You can pick this up and now you have something that can strike this way, coming back here, down over the top, up into the stomach with a lot of force. And again, it's concentrating all the force of your natural power and it puts it right in the tip. So a dry erase marker, and I have learned the hard way that if you get the dollar store version of these, they're cheap and they just break apart. If you get the Expo, which is I think the, the standard, you know, you get it at any office supply store, these are pretty strong. They don't, uh, they don't break. Yeah, uh, Tourist View says, that you assume I have good upper body strength and the answer is yes, and so can you. You can also have good upper body strength and unless you have some type of injury or you have some limitation, that's understandable. But the key to all of the power comes through turning your shoulders and hips, extending the arms, moving the body. So even if you don't have, if you don't, I love doing push-ups. I hope you love them too. And if you don't, I hope you fall in love with them. Hi, Garen. But if you don't, if you don't ever do thousands of push-ups like I like to do, you can still generate significant power. There's a difference between size. A bigger person is not a more bigger threat. Sometimes that skinny, wiry man or woman who knows how to use their body is more of a threat than the big muscle bound dude from the gym who just looks big. He's got big looking muscles and he can lift a lot of weight, but he can't generate power. Power comes from turning the shoulders and the hips. Power comes from extending your technique, whether it's an elbow or a kick or a knee or a palm strike or a punch or striking with your dry erase marker. That extension, rotation of the shoulders and hips, and then acceleration, moving the feet forward. That's what creates damage. That's where power comes from. It's not from somebody's size. So don't be fooled, don't be tricked by somebody who looks strong. Their strength is not a threat to you. Their knowledge might be a threat. If they know what they're doing, then you should be worried. But just somebody who's big, that doesn't mean that they know what they're doing. That doesn't mean they know how to hurt somebody for self-defense. You, no matter what your size is, you can become more dangerous in self-defense if you learn how to do it correctly. Hello, Gabriel, it's good to see you. Now, number next, I don't know what we're on, is the Coupaton keychain. And this is, yeah, power is mass acceleration. Thank you, Garen. This is based on the Yawara palm, uh, palm stick. Your hand is here. I say do this, a lot of people don't like that because they, they've been taught by an expert that if someone grabs here, it can rip your thumb off or cause damage, and I'm sure that's true. Some people don't like it because when you put your thumb here, if you strike and you don't have significant hand strength, it'll come back and snap that bone there. That's also possibly true. I like it because I train a lot and I strike a lot and I practice a lot and I feel like I can handle that. Now, you don't have to hold it that way. You can hold it like this. Another option or another function of this is that if your keys are here, it becomes a slashing or distracting weapon. You can cut somebody, you can move them back this way but everything else is the same. You have turning your whole body, you have thrusting forward, you have coming down over the top, you have turning your shoulder into it, you have um, striking behind you. One of my favorite things is turning with an elbow, he's behind you, bring your elbow higher than your shoulder, that way if his hands are on your neck, you'll knock him off immediately. Step in, I always want you to step, step in. You can also extend, this way you can come down into the stomach or into the groin, all using your Kubaton keychain. When you learn to defend yourself using short sticks for self-defense. Next, this is, <laughs> this is one of my favorites because I'm a big um, Jason Bourne fan, right? I teach people, literally, I teach them, I say, I wanna teach you how to fight like Jason Bourne. And then we learn how to do Kali Eskrima, our niece, a little bit of Jeet Kune Do, all the things that Jason Bourne does in the movies. Now it's great for the movies, it's not necessarily super effective in real life. A lot of the techniques are if you have the right principles. It doesn't matter what the techniques are, the principles are the key. Situational awareness, get in a better position, uh, close with and destroy, violence of action, what can you remove or destroy, those are all principles. They are better than any technique. I was thinking this morning, what's better, boxing 
or karate for self-defense. And karate being a general term, any martial art, any Eastern martial art, boxing, which is Western martial art, or any Eastern martial art. Per personally, I like boxing, and then I like to blend it in to my Eastern martial arts. I like to do boxing in the karate, and then they all become effective. But the techniques don't really matter as much as the principles. If you have the right principles, any technique will work. Now, this is the tactical pin. And I put a link below. These are super inexpensive. They're kind of fun to have as a gimmicky tool, but they're also effective. This has that same window breaker that this extremely nice self-defense palm strike or palm stick has. Um, so I'm gonna read this comment real quick. Yes, please. The question was if you post the link, will I look at it and give a comment on it? Yes, absolutely do that. And I'll come back and take a look. This pen works. You can write with it. I'm left-handed. You can write with it. Um, so you have that, right? You always have a pen with you. You should always have a pen with you. You should always have something to write with and something to write on. You should always take notes. Don't treat your brain as a filing cabinet. Write it down. That's just the teacher in me coming out. Now, from here, you can also hold it the same way you do all the other palm sticks. And you have your thrusting, you have your reverse strike, you have your swinging strike, you have coming down over the top, hitting the guy behind you, or the girl, if it's a bad girl, you know, instead of a bad guy, turning your body, hitting with the elbow, extending the arm. All of that is super effective. And because of the way it's made, it's extremely durable. It's not supposed to break when you use it for self-defense. Now, I don't use these against my bags for obvious reasons. I'll put holes in them. I can strike those with the blunt objects, but not with the sharp objects. But these are very effective in self-defense, and it's just something you can have with you all the time that doesn't look as threatening. Now, when you have that on the end, someone might question it, but you explain it to them, especially when you live in an area like Florida, everybody sees stories weekly about cars going into the canal and then people either nearly drowning or drowning. This is to break the window. I always, and, and all my cars, my car, my wife's car, uh, in multiple places, there are window breakers. I teach my kids how to use them to break the window in case it ever does happen. That's a real threat. Learn how to get out of a car that's submerged in water, but you're gonna need something like that. You can beat on it all you want with your hands and your feet. The window's not gonna break. This with a little bit of force because of the concentration there on the tip, that with a little bit of force will break the window. A kid can break a window with a car like that, with that type of tool. All right, and then these come with like extra pin that go inside. Yeah, literally, right, Garen, good point. Now, my favorite short self-defense tool based on the, um, oh, Hank S, is that one spring-loaded? No, Hank, that's a cheap, like less than 10 bucks. The link's below if you want to go and see what it is. They make much, much nicer ones than that. But um, I have so many self-defense tools, especially this kind, that I, I don't, I just want to have something with me all the time that I write with. And I want to be able to use it in self-defense. So I just need something a little bit stronger. I don't need the spring-loaded, just a personal preference. The bevel on this is designed to bite, <laughs> right? For self-defense. Meaning, when you come forward in this self-defense tactical flashlight, you can do all these same techniques. This is made out of an extremely durable polymer or plastic. Some are made in aluminum, some are plastic. Again, this isn't that expensive. I didn't put it the link below, but there are plenty. You go, go, go on the Amazon, look at the pen, and then it'll pop these up. You'll see these everywhere. Just make sure that um, it costs a little bit more. You don't want to be too cheap because then they, they fall apart. This one, and I'm going to flash it. Get ready for it. This one is very bright. That's one of the most effective uh, ways to use it. When I was a military policeman, we were taught, we used to carry those old mag lights, the big D cell battery, and it, it's like a baton, right? And you would come up to the car, in the, especially at night, and, the, and, and, and you're knocking on the window and you're doing this. And the whole reason is to disorient the driver so that if he does have any ill intention of pulling something out and trying to hurt the police officer, he can't see him, right? That's the whole purpose of it. This works really well in self-defense. You can hold it like this. You can do that strike. It's like that big roll of quarters, old school. You can thrust here, you can thrust here. You can come straight in. You can get the guy behind you or the girl behind you, come up over the top, come down over the top, right into here, right into here. And I guarantee you this bevel on the end is going to rip skin for self-defense. But you can also just turn it on 
And if they can't see you, it's a lot harder for them to close the distance and hurt you. So use both. Use the function of it as a flashlight. Hopefully that's all you need. That ends the self-defense situation. You get out of there, you're safe, and they go, they lose their night vision for a while. Their, their pupils go shrink real fast, and then they won't be able to see anything. No lights coming in. Just from using the tactical flashlight, just a self-defense flashlight. <laughs> I saw Hank's, Hank had a comment about his friend in school who had used the mag light to take care of a problem that he had. And um, they, yeah, they're very effective for that. Now, this one is not an obvious stick for self-defense, but this is one of, when you learn how to defend yourself using short sticks for self-defense, this is also a big time favorite of mine because you can find a lot of throwaway magazines. This is a local one, this is a surfing magazine because I live near the beach. I was going to try to find you a picture. Look, there's a guy under the water. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, normally there's some pretty good surfing pictures in here, but there's a lot about local breweries and coffee shops and that kind of stuff. But the point isn't what's in it. The point is when you hold it. And I was given a tip by a librarian who said to start here and roll it up. And I tried it over and over again, and I just didn't like it. So I appreciate the tip and I see value in it. And the, what she was saying was, when you roll it up, it makes it really flat. I like, and you can also, listen to this. This is super cool. You can take one of your other palm sticks and put that, start on the, the paper side, put that in the middle, and now all of a sudden you have hardened or strengthened a little bit longer self-defense stick. Now with this length, let me get these off of here before I knock them across the room. With this length, you can strike in this motion. You can thrust here. You, I better drop that out before I stick a hole in my bag. That was the wrong one. But the, the, the basic idea is once you roll it, roll it super tight and then take a good grip on it. The nice thing about using a magazine as a short stick for self-defense is it's not going to come out of your hand because the coating on the magazine and the ink will keep it from moving. It's like the perfect grip. You can bring this up into the stomach, around into the ear, into the neck for self-defense, into the ribs. You can strike in any of these positions. You can come down over the top, right into the throat, right into the nose, right into the teeth, right into the top of the chest, into that flesh between where the clavicle comes together. You can strike all those different areas. You can strike the person behind you. Just when you hold it, make sure there's a little bit coming out of the bottom. Choke up a little bit so that you can use that to strike with. And this becomes very effective. Now, I don't teach any type of come along techniques or takedowns. It's like when I teach the, the baton, using the expandable baton. A lot of people like the idea of getting the police baton that expands, carrying that for self-defense. I don't teach that because it's so hard for people to be able to see that. But if you it, be able to get those, they're illegal. But if you use one of these, you can take this anywhere you go. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.